Hi everybody, this is Jazz from About Slingshots YouTube channel. When I first heard the term flat trajectory in slingshot forums, I knew that it meant that a trajectory is practically flat since no trajectory can be flat. Well, except maybe in some special cases, which are, by the way, unrelated to common slingshot shooting situations. To put it humorously, if a trajectory is flat like this, or like this, or like this, then how does the ammo fall to the ground? Like this? Or like this? Of course, it does not work that way. Rather, one of the trajectories, for example, the one of the 45 degree shot, might look something like this. That is, completely curvy. For years I lived with that. But then, for some reason, I asked myself, but why the trajectory is curvy in the first place? For a physicist, of course, this is not an issue at all, but for me, in order to better understand curviness of the trajectory, I had to go to the internet, read about physics trajectories, Galilei, Newton, and what I have found and learned, I want to present in this video. All the inconsistencies are to be blamed on me. Before we start, let us have a larger view at trajectories in couple of possible environments. First, we have gravity on and gravity off situation, that is, there is gravity and there is no gravity. And then we have air on and air off situation, that is, there is air and there is no air. In a situation when there is no gravity and no air here, a projectile would travel in a straight path with constant velocity indefinitely or until it meets some other force. In a situation where there is no gravity but there is air, here, which is, by the way, a non-existent hypothetical situation, projectile would travel in a straight line, but with the difference that it would eventually come to a stop, because the projectile will be met by air resistance. By the way, I learned on the internet that the time for this projectile to come to a stop might be extremely long, maybe indefinitely, however, I am not ready to discuss it here. When we have a situation with gravity, but without air, as here, a shot under 45 degrees might look something like this. And in the situation with air, something like this. The difference being that a projectile in no air situation will travel higher and have longer range than the one traveling through air. These two possibilities in the second column, where gravity is on, here, but with and without air, I broaden with various shooting angles and they look something like this. This is a zero degrees shot in air situation and in no air situation. This is a 45 degree shot in air situation and in no air situation. And this is a minus 45 degree shot done in air situation and in no air situation. So in all situations where gravity is on, the trajectory is curvy. And if you remember, when we had situations where there is no gravity, the trajectory is a straight line. But there are some other differences when we have the situation when the gravity is on, but in situations when there is no air and when there is air. It's not only the range and the height of the trajectory, the difference in symmetry. You see here in an air-on situation, if we cut this trajectory through the highest point down and we rotate this left side to the right side, they should be symmetric, like this. But they are not, you see, the real trajectory, the real part of this trajectory, the right side, is, how to say, narrower or of a smaller range, which means simply that they are not symmetric. However, in air-off situation, in a vacuum, the left and right side of the trajectory are symmetric. Here, I simply had to make offset of about two or three points, otherwise these two green and red curves would overlap and would not be visible. And there is still another difference. Most people think that the longest shot is under 45 degrees, which is true, but in a vacuum. In an air situation, is not really so. This is a 45 degrees shot in air situation, 
and this is some 38 plus degree shot in air situation and you see it's a little bit longer than 45 degrees. In order to better understand the curviness of a trajectory, let us consider a couple of relevant concepts. An argument rose among my friends after some rounds of beer which shortly looks like this. If you fire a bullet straight up in the sky, it will gradually slow down and in one moment its velocity will be zero, that is, it will come to a stop before it starts to go down. The question is, for how long time it will stay in that position before starting to go down. Of course, we did not solve this issue that night and after a couple of days I joined a Discovery Channel related physics forum where by the way I don't belong at all and I asked this question. I waited for three to four days to get an answer which delighted me and it went like this. While it is true that the velocity of the bullet at some point will become zero, it will happen in no time at all. For me, this was something like a koan, which I loved. I struggled for some time to understand it and came with this explanation. I stress my explanation. While the bullet traveled along its vertical trajectory, gravity never ceased to act upon it. The proof for this is obvious, its diminishing velocity, as illustrated here by this triangle. So if you want to put this in a philosophical perspective, the bullet was in some way already going backwards because it went shorter distances in the same period of time than it could without gravity. So when the bullet came to a zero velocity position, gravity did not have to have some time to grab it and cause its trajectory downwards. It was under the influence of gravity all the time, being pulled backwards all the time. So its zero velocity position does not need to last any time at all. Slingshot shooting wise, this means that also that when you stretch your rubber bands and just before the release, gravity is already acting upon your armor, which does not fall down simply because it is supported by your fingers. This means that if you shoot a perfectly horizontal shot, which is represented here by this horizontal line, by the moment of reaching the forks, it will already be in a point which is lower than the horizontal line and it is called a drop. At this distance may be infinitesimally small, but at 10, 15, 20 meters it is not, as we shall see later. Another concept that we have to visit for our discussion is the concept of two motions or two velocities. Let us say that you shoot your ammo from a ground level, that is the height of your forks in relation to the ground is 0 meters, and under an angle of 30 degrees, at the exit velocity of 65.26 meters per second, and then we see what happens in a tenth of a second, on 0.1 second. So during this time your ammo will make this trajectory and horizontally it is displaced to a certain distance and vertically it is displayed to a certain distance. And these distances are not the same. Horizontally it made 5 meters of range and vertically its height is 2.8 meters, almost two times less. So logically if for the same period of time an object made two different distances then these velocities would not be the same. Horizontal velocity is 43.1 meters per second and vertical is 21 meters per second and resultant velocity is 49.4 meters per second higher than both of these velocities which is logical. If you see this as right angle triangle then the hypotenuse is longer than both its base and its height. This we call horizontal motion which has its horizontal velocity and this is vertical motion with its vertical velocity and horizontal motion is governed by Newton's first law of motion and vertical motion is governed by Newton's second law of motion which we shall discuss in more detail later. Another concept that we have to visit states that horizontal and vertical motions are independent. On the internet you can find videos where a professor of physics stands in front of a device which looks like a big capital letter T. On its top it has a spring, a piston and some locking unlocking device. He pulls the spring which in the same time pulls the piston with it and the system is locked. Let's say as in this position. Then he has two large steel balls. One of them he puts on 
one end of the horizontal rod of the letter T so that it touches the piston and the other has a hole in it and he brings this ball so that the rod goes through the hole. Then he releases the piston which in the same time knocks away the right ball and drops the ball on the left. The sounds from the balls hitting the ground come in the same moment, thus creating one sound actually which means that they took the same time to reach the same vertical distance to the ground no matter that the ball on the right made quite some horizontal distance too. This serves as a demonstration that these two movements are independent of each other. Another demonstration says that when you drop one bullet from the same height as the other that you fire from the firearm, they will both touch the ground in the same time regardless of the velocity of the fired one because they have to cover the same vertical distance which is independent of horizontal distance that the second bullet will cover. Its velocity only determines how far it will go or its range, not the time to travel to hit the ground. Finally we have to visit two more exciting concepts before we wrap up this part of the presentation. These are the Newton's first and second law of motion. The first law of motion states that an object at rest remains at rest or if in motion remains in motion at a constant velocity unless acted on by an external force. Graphically it looks like this. You see this is this part remains in motion at a constant velocity which means that in each segment of time it makes same distance which means it has at the same or constant velocity and this one unless acted on by an external force is this actually your slingshot arm when travels through the air is confronted by air resistance and this is the meaning of unless acted on by an external force in this case you see in the same segment of time the distance becomes shorter and shorter. So when we speak of a horizontal movement and a horizontal velocity, we actually speak of Newton's first law of motion. Vertical movement and vertical velocity of your slingshot arm has to do exclusively with the gravity. Gravity is the force by which a planet or other body draws objects towards its center. But gravity causes objects to accelerate during their fall. Acceleration on Earth is some 9.81 meters per second. Thus, when we speak of vertical moment and vertical velocity, we speak of gravity and Newton's second law of motion. Let us consider some facts related to gravity. You see here, this is the first, second, third and fourth second of flight of a falling object. In the first second, the total distance covered will be 4.9 meters. In the second 14.9, then 29.4 and then 49.0, in total 98.2. Or if you want to put it graphically, this is the distance that the object covers in first, second, third and fourth second of its free fall. Or if you want to put it on top of each other as a vertical axis, this is what you get. Let us now put all these concepts together. First, let us imagine that horizontal velocity and vertical velocity are the same and also they are constant. Then the vectors connecting those points would be like this. Actually, these vectors here would make a straight line, in this case 45 degrees. If one of these, let's say horizontal velocity, was higher, then in the same period of time they would not make the same distances as here so the vectors or the trajectory would look like this a little bit inclined towards the horizontal axis while the previous one the 45 degree would look like this and also if the case was opposite if vertical velocity was higher than the horizontal one then our trajectory would be inclined somewhere here towards the vertical axis in reality, this is not the case. Gravity forces objects to fall faster and faster, as we have seen before, so that in each subsequent second, you know, this is the same periods of time, one second, they make longer and longer distances. Why the horizontal distance or horizontal velocity in the vacuum is constant? So that vectors connecting those points, you see, 
look like this actually making a curved trajectory and in the air situation we have again gravity but we have a little bit shorter and shorter distances which are made by the projectile in each sub subsequent second so the trajectory is even more inclined towards the gravity as opposed to the one in the vacuum as we have seen just a moment ago so then what to say why trajectory is curved well this is not only because of gravity this is because there are two movements of a projectile two velocities and those movements are independent of each other one of them a vertical movement is higher and higher in each subsequent period of time while the horizontal one either stays constant as in vacuum or is a bit shorter and shorter in each subsequent period of time because of air resistance both of them make the trajectory to be curved and that's it i must admit that this was not a very needed video it is questionably practical however i was intrigued and i researched topics which are way away from my competencies i mean physics and ballistics and so on but i learned some interesting stuff and i simply could not keep my mouth shut which is also largely true for my previous videos, I guess. But I'm sure that your comments will help improve my efforts. So this ends this video and I hope you enjoyed. See you in my next video, most probably in Stretch Ratio is not mystified enough. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.